no, 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 no. Megan, if you don't hit the solar plexus, you're not going to stop the heart. But I punctured the sternum. Wouldn't he bleed to death? Well, sure, in about eight or nine minutes. If you hit an artery. Not sounding like such a sure thing, is it? Sorry, Daddy. Now, that's okay, Princess. <laughs> that's good, Shelby. Trust no one. Okay, Rodney, show your sister how it's done. Don't tip your moves. Remember, warfare is based on deception. Attaboy. <laughs> Look at that guy. Teaching his kids that you can solve problems with violence. I blame rap music. Laugh if you will, Wanda, but I happen to believe it's a father's job to guide his child down a more civilized path. I swear, sometimes I think the universe is playing a cosmic joke sticking me and Carl together. Well, I'm off to win the province of Gascony back from the French. Should I keep the boar's head warm? Sure. It's not like it's gonna take a hundred years. Well, I'm off to moisten the dust a little bighorn with the blood of our enemies. You stay behind and guard the corn. Good luck, strikes like thunder. You too, prepare as thick sauces. Well, there's Normandy, boys. Smoke them if you got them. Anybody brave enough for mint jelly? You know, I'm sure a guy like Carl was useful in prehistoric times, but the new millennium requires a more evolved man. Like you. Well, that's not what I was saying, but I suppose if you had to name an example. What's wrong? The disposal's broken. Great. Now I have to call a repairman. That's not necessary. I appreciate the vote of confidence, honey, but plumbing's really not my... Carl! Okay, Rodney, hit the juice. It sounds better than before. As long as I had the housing popped, I went ahead and torched your rotor blades. Thank you. FYI, Wanda, you should never put cheese in the disposal when you're running hot water. Uh, that would be me. <laughs> I was making stuffed mushrooms. Hey, you want to see my imitation of a zit popping? <laughs> Rodney! Oh, no, 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 let him go. <laughs> this is pretty funny. Hey, this is good. This is very, very good. All right, come on, son, spew the food. It's rude to keep people waiting. No way, show's over. Phew, I guess I'll have to do it myself. Hey, you got any cottage cheese? This keg is really designed around cottage cheese. People who can fix things with their hands are so impressive. Mm. Watching Carl today, I don't know, there was something almost thrilling about the way he handled those tools. I wonder if he could fix our VCR. I told you I would fix that. I know, honey, but that was two years ago. Oh, sorry. I guess I've had a few other little items on my to-do list. Make a living. Raise a daughter. Fine. Forget it. Why don't you marry your precious Carl if you love him so much? That's what I should have said. I can hear you. Rodney, you haven't touched your dinner. I'm not hungry. Well, you need to eat your greens. Here, have some salad. How can you call Jello with mini marshmallows salad? And this tastes like a bathroom rug. Hey, if your mother can take the time to boil that meat, you can take the time to eat it. But it's bland. So spice it up. <laughs> What's gotten into you? You never complained about food before. Maybe I never tasted food before. Eat. No. Eat. No. It's about the young drugs. Just eat your cheese single, dear. Oh, yeah. I can hear you. See if you can hear me after you take a flying leap. That's what I should have said. That would have clammed her up. Clammed her up good. Mr. Mac is talking to himself. Daryl does that sometimes. So did my grandma. I truly believe that really old people can hear voices from the other side. He's not even 30! Uh, Wanda? Busy? Could you ladies come out here, please? <laughs> That's right, Zoe. Your favorite program is on at night. And that can only mean... Daryl, you fixed the VCR. Yes, I did. And I think we can all take away a little lesson from this evening. Leave repairs to the professionals? Stupid fuse. They're on! Off! On! Off! Uh. On! Ah. 
Way off. What could have tripped the main grid? What's that? It's coming from Carl's house. Sounds like a 5,000 kilowatt hybrid diesel electric generator. God bless that man. Here's the triangle, people. Food, water, security. That's all there is. First, food. As of now, everybody goes on a strictly rationed diet of meat-flavored soy product and rehydrated spinach flakes. No worse than what we usually eat. Don't interrupt your father while he's laying at the post-apocalyptic order. Second, water. There's enough in my underground tanks to last us three weeks. After that, we dissolve aqua germicidal tablets in our urine. Thank God we got Carl. He's worth a hundred of the other kind of man. Finally, security. Rodney, Megan, Shelby, spread out and patrol the perimeter. Don't forget your tasers. Where's the bathroom? There's two non-electric composting toilets out back, sombrero on the gen store, decorative fan on the gals. He thinks of everything. I hope someone tries to shoot Carl so I can take the bullet. Carl, isn't all this survivalist stuff a little excessive? We prefer the term independent urban dweller, Daryl. And if you call ensuring the safety of our wives and children excessive, well, we're just gonna have to agree to disagree on that one. Hello, Carl. Doug. Power out on Oak Street, too? Yep. We heard you had food and water. You heard right. We'd be happy to share it with you. Well, that's one option. Of course, there'd be more for us if we just took it. And I guess there's only one way to settle this. Two men enter, one man leaves. Two men enter, one man leaves. A cage match to the death? This is crazy! Murphy, can't you do something? The law went out with the power, McPherson. Kill him, Carl! You ready to do this? Almost. Now I'm ready. I thought we agreed no weapons. This is about survival, Bitterman. <laughs> Hate to get blood on the lawn. Throws off the pH. Two men enter, one man leaves. Two men enter, one man leaves. I've got to stop this. One man leaves. Two men enter, hey! one hey! man leaves. What's happened to us? Are we no better than a pack of dogs fighting over a carcass? We're civilized human beings. We belong to the same homeowners association. Carol, I signed your petition to put in speed bumps. Jim, my wife buys Mary Kay from your wife. Steve, that's my barbecue fork you've got pressed against Mrs. Thorson's neck. Now please, let's stop this insanity and act like the reasonable, good people we are. Three men enter, one man leaves. 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 Three men enter. Eight and a half minutes. Our power company is really on the beam. Oh, I can still catch the order part of Law & Order. Need any help taking down the death cage? No, nah, I got it. Bowling Tuesday? Tuesday's good. Carl was right all along. People are animals. <sighs> Life is nothing more than a struggle for survival. Daryl, nobody was hurt. It's over. Everything I was going to teach Zoe to value, all the so-called finer things in life, all worthless. She'd be better off learning how to throw nunchucks. You don't throw nunchucks. I thought the VCR was broken. Oh, Carl popped over and fixed it just before he oiled up for the death match. I'm going for a walk. I've got a good mind to give up living And go shopping instead To pick out me a tombstone Dead. That's cilantro. Hello?
Rodney, what are you doing out here? Trying to be like you. Huh? It's that stuffed mushroom you made. It was like having a piece of God in my mouth. You liked it that much? I've been trying to recreate it all night. Well, let's have a taste. Oh. Hmm. Well, the cumin's fighting the garlic. Still, this shows a lot of promise. Wow. That means a lot coming from you. But why are you sneaking around out here? That's my dad. He's the worst father in the world. He is? He starts yelling if he even suggests something could taste better. That sounds terrible. You know it. Well, I gotta tell you, Rodney, if I were you, I would resent him a lot. Say, you know, if you julienne those carrots, they'll retain more of the sauce. Daryl? Hi, honey. Where have you been? Oh, you know, out and about, not doing anything, really. You seem awfully happy for someone who didn't do anything. Do I? Huh. Well, you go on back to sleep. Good night. Wanda has a baby. She's fine. It's Daryl I'm worried about. I think he might be having an affair. Oh, Wanda, Daryl wouldn't cheat on you. Really? Of course not. He's the type who's so grateful somebody actually married him, he'd never do anything to blow it. Hey, what are we talking about? Wanda thinks Daryl's having an affair. <laughs> Why is that so funny? Well, in the first place, he'd have to seduce somebody. He seduced me? Oh, seduced who? Mrs. Mack thinks Mr. Mack's fooling around. Daryl? Not a chance. <laughs> <laughs> For your information, my Daryl is a completely different man when he takes off his glasses. I wouldn't be surprised if he'd had affairs with scores of women. In fact, I'll bet you right now he's in some crummy motel licking dime store whiskey off the small of a cheap whore's back. So there. She sure loves that man. Rodney, you can't stay in there all night. Yes, I can. You'll miss your dinner. Big deal. What is going on with you lately? Are you gay? Are you hopped up on goofballs? I can't understand you if you won't talk to me, son. I don't feel like talking. Open this door! No! There's a five-pound canned ham on the table. What are the rest of us gonna eat? Oh, that's it! <laughs> so what'd you bring tonight? Keepers? Chevrolet? Something even more exciting. It's time for the King Lua Cajun Cook La La. Here's your host, King Lua. <laughs> Who wants to eat like a pig? I didn't come here to watch TV. I came here to cook. Patience, little man. Okay, before we send some crawfish to a fiery death, I want to remind you about the upcoming King Lua Little Chef's Cook Off. The winning on phone gets an autographed copy of King Lua's. Blackin' like me. And a set of the cafe law saucepan. Ah, oh, nothing eats more evenly than those. Do you think I'm good enough? I know you are. I sent in a square of your goat cheese empanada and they accepted you. Wow! I thought the crust on that empanada was a little soggy. I guess others disagree. Don't get cocky. We still got a lot of work to do. Hey, this garlic press has my initials on it. Well, I guess you better just keep it then. Gee, Mr. McPherson, you're the greatest man I've ever known. You know, I was crazy to think Daryl would cheat on me. He's much too good and kind and decent. In fact, I've been taking him for granted. Mm. Rolling my eyes when he makes his little speeches. So what if he can't fix the VCR? There's nothing on anymore but cartoons. Hello? Oh, hi. I was just thinking about you. Yeah, we made some magic last night, didn't we? Yeah, I'm glad you liked the present. Of course I'll see you tonight. Ah, don't worry, I'll feed the wife some excuse. Okay, bye. So... Wanda! Who is she, Daryl? Rodney? 
he's got this gift that would have gone completely unnoticed if I hadn't come along. I'm like a father to the boy. But he already has a father. Well, Carl can't give him what I can. All that survival of the fittest crap is crushing his gentle spirit. Rodney? Yes, Rodney. Working with him has restored my faith that man was put on this earth for a higher purpose. Rodney? It's a pleasure to meet you, Mr. Lerat. For me as well, Rodney. Mm, I see you brought your own garlic press. Can't get anything by you. <laughs> see, you do a lot of Creole cooking, and New Orleans has that by you. I got it. Rodney, I'd like you to meet your competition. This is Gunther Beckenbauer. He's come all the way from Berlin. East Berlin. Rodney Bitterman, may the best man win. This what do you win? American catsup and aerosol cheese? I will bury you. <sighs> huh? McPherson. Farewell. Gunther's victory as a hot appetizer competition puts him in the lead. But Rodney can still catch up if he wins the final event. Don't go nowhere, homie. <laughs> the swill you call bisque was no match for my harvest squash puree. Oh, I don't think I can do this. Sure you can. Just remember what I taught you. Hello, Rodney. <laughs> You want to talk now, or should I wait until you finish putting on your makeup? Look, Carl, I can explain. You've caused enough trouble, Daryl. Let's go, son. Yes, sir. Why so sad, American boy? Your father is doing you a favor. What's that supposed to mean? That the fry chef you call his son has no chance against my superior culinary arsenal. Come on, Rodney. Is that what the Bittermans do? Walk away from a fight? Now hold on, Daryl. In World War II, my grandfather was on the front lines. So was mine, Carl. Ten seconds. What's it gonna be? Fight on or wave the white flag? Put your puffy hat on, son. Do you really think I can do it, Dad? If your great-grandfather could do it on the beaches of Normandy, you can do it on the sound stages of the Cajun Food Channel. <laughs> it's time for the final competition. Our little chefs will each take a bite of the mystery dish, then go to their kitchens and recreate it. While they're putting on the blindfolds, we're going to let you in on the secret. <laughs> ah. Mm -hmm. Okay, two men they enter, one man she leaves. Where'd he learn to do that? No, not the lemon juice. Why not? You never add lemon to a cream sauce. It's one of the first things I taught him. Ah! 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 The time she is up. Now for the final reckoning. The winner of King Liwa's Little Chef's Cook-Off is... Rodney Bitterman! All right! Give me those saucepans! Hey, that's my boy! Bah! Sorry, mon enfant. Too lemony. But he put in far more lemons than I. Oh, look at that. I must have forgot to take off the plastic seal. You deceived me. Someone once taught me all warfare is based on deception. Now you just run along home and tell your chancellor not to get any big ideas. Yes, sir. To my son. To my student. To the two greatest men I know. Know what kept us going out there, Mac? The thought of your wives and kids back home? Nope. Your macaroon tartlets. Eat them if you got them, boys. Hey!